Uh, hello all. Thank you for being here with us to another episode of uh, Learn from the Greeks. And our today's guest is Katerina Muchachu. Hi, Katerina. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, for us as well. And uh, should we start about uh, introducing yourself a little bit? Tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, your course of life. So um, I, I am officially an actress turned screenwriter and producer. Um, I own um, a small production studio in Los Angeles with my husband. Um, it's been a long path. It uh, started about six years ago. Uh, I'm a mother of two, so right now I'm kind of on hold uh, with everything uh, creative. Um, and um, I'm struggling between motherhood and um, the entertainment business, um, but I'm currently extremely creative in my writing, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to um, be very productive in the next year or two. Uh, congratulations for your two littles um for your mother's side and for your work uh you're a multi-talented personality because you're not only an actor but you're a producer a screenwriter an activist and uh yeah i mean could you please give us uh, some tips for a young person that wants to follow the same career the same path as yours um so i i, I believe in knowledge i believe in studies, and when I say studies, I mean academic studies. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in um, whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you want to um, focus on in your life, um, you just have to go through academia, knowledge, uh, books. I know today we have knowledge, you know, at our at the tip of our uh, at every like it's it's just right there you just open a screen you google something and everything comes out but i think um the basis of everything is deeper knowledge so uh first of all i would recommend you know not not just being one thing because when i was growing up and i wanted to do so many things oh would you what do you want to be you want to be an actress you want to be a singer you can't do both of course you can do both Oh, you want to be, you either have to be a writer or a producer. And, and Amer America is very much like that. They just want specialized people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm quite the opposite. I, I believe in a more holistic type of personality. So, yeah, my advice would be this. Um, whatever you like, just um, pursue. And then if you like something else, uh, pursue something else. And it, it, I, what I've discovered is everything grows in parallel. And at some point, everything kind of um, m uh, sort of joins together and, and becomes you. So that, that would be my tip, just knowledge, 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 research, academia, and uh, the pursuit of talent, whatever it is. Thank you for your advices. And um, would you say that Hollywood is a hard to get destination uh, for um, if someone wants to give it a try, uh, where should he start from? Oh, there are so many ways. And, and right now, things uh, not only have changed ever since I arrived here 13 years ago, uh, things keep changing. So it used to be, um, if you're an actor, you come here, you try to find an agent and a good manager, and that will get you in a castings office, and you know that's going to bring you work eventually. Um, it is no longer the case. Um, you can actually, with the digital digital technology that we have, uh, everyone can, you know, have a, a camera that's um, that's got a high quality uh, lens um, and a good image, so they can shoot their own film. Uh, so you can be your own personal filmmaker, your own personal writer, and then you can act in your movie. That used to be. Um, absolutely impossible 15 years ago you know we, we used to do everything on film it's changed so much so that's a way of doing it and i think you know trying to make your own product and becoming your own 
um, uh, owning your own project is one way of doing it, especially if you attend, you know, small film festivals or bigger film festival. That's a good way of starting out. Be authentic also. This is what you mean. Authenticity. Right. Be authentic. Yeah. Be, yes, of course. I mean, you're, cr you're your own creator and you can be acting in, your, in whatever you create. So that's one way of doing it, which I love. This is my favorite way. And also, I mean, right now we have platforms that are universal. We have Netflix, we have uh, online platforms. So an actor in Turkey, for example, and I have a very specific example, uh, an ex-co-star of mine is, is starring in a Turkish show on Netflix right now. And so he, he is famous am among my American friends. He will be able to find an agent right away. So see, mm -hmm. there are very different ways of doing the uh, of doing it. But thank God, uh, the 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 old path of having to waste your time to find mm -hmm. an agent, to find a manager, to do a million castings, is no longer needed, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the social media platforms. You know, your own Instagram, your own YouTube channel, your own podcast, whatever it is. I think yes, you ha focusing on your being your own. Um, master of your project is key to making it in Hollywood even today. Because let's not forget, old Hollywood is dead. Mm -hmm. Old Hollywood is dead. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. I said that. You said that, yeah. Especially now with COVID, probably. But we're all on digital platforms, even our interview today is on online. It's on digital. So, do you have any failures and what did they teach you if you do have? That's a great question, and I, w it's, I have to say, whenever I'm asked about failures, I have to think twice, because I guess I never consider anything as a failure in my life. I, I probably should, but I never do. Somehow, no, I'm I'm always I'm always finding something good in the f in the failure, probably because I, I like try to ask me what is your failure. I <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Um, so, uh, so I guess what I'm taught is to look at the positive side of a failure. <laughs> yeah, and get something out of it. Yeah. Take a lesson. So next time you're going to be better. You're going to advance yourself. Yeah. And if we push it uh, to a kind of more play on words, like don't look at your failure as, as your failure to look, mm -hmm. look at it as just an experience and as wisdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, about COVID, how has COVID affected um, you? And do you think there are any opportunities in this situation? And I mean, in generally speaking, but also professionally as an actor, producer in film industry, let's say. Um, COVID has affected me because it's affecting every everyone. I, I'm, I'm a very empathetic human being. I'm a very social human being. I suffer, I suffer from from huh. this ongoing um, era that we're, we're in. And I suffer as a mother. I worry about the, fu the future of my children. So um, I think I'm traumatized like everyone else. And let's face it, you know, we, we put a good smile on our face, but it's very hard. Uh, opportunity, uh, of course. Um, we just have to make sure that we're the ones grabbing the opportunity because <laughs> there are many opportunists during periods of crisis, crises. Um, so, and when I say we, I mean, you know, the ones wanting to do something good. That's, that's who we is, uh, uh, that's what I meant by we. So every human being willing to make something good in, uh, out of their lives and in their lives for themselves and for their, for their environment, for their community, for their country. Um, that's what we have to focus on. So yeah, there is an opportunity there, definitely. We just have to make sure we contain the trauma. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms, if you want me to be more specific, again, I said in the beginning, yes, I'm extremely creative right now. So I guess th th this is the good part of COVID. It makes us, we go so deep into our creative. psyche, it makes us very creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, indeed. Um, could you tell us a word about Greece uh, that is uh, more that for you better describes Greece? And um, 
what do you miss most from Greece? And what is your current interaction with Greece? Because you're living in LA for 13 years, you said. So basically you're based here, you have your life here. So, so um, I, you know, I live in an era, the era of internet, um, Twitter, Facebook. I, I shouldn't have mentioned that one, but. Uh, <laughs> So, so I've never, those 13 years, um, right when I came here, Facebook was starting big. So, so I never had, I never lost contact with Greece, never ever, on a daily basis. I'm watching, following everything political, everything human, everything entertainment. Um, of course, I can't go to a Greek theater right now, but who can? Nobody can right now in the lockdowns. But anyway, um, but Greece for me is something else. Greece is topos, meaning the place, mm -hmm. as well as utopos, utopia. But utopia is not something that it does that that does not exist. Utopia is something that very much exists and should exist in our minds and soul. And this, for me, is embodied in in, in Greece in terms of the idea of Greece and the idea of its uh, what it represents, which is freedom. I think everyone who relates to Greece relates in, in any way, in, I mean, in some way or another, to the idea of being a free human being, uh, the idea of freedom, which is uh, really at the core of our culture, um, of, our, uh, of the way we were brought up. Of our history, of the language we we talk, we speak not and not English language, which which I'm speaking right now, the Greek language. So eleftheria it means where I'm going. Uh, I'm going. It's this etym et et etymology is el elef eros. I'm going toward love. So I'm going toward where I feel there is love. So that's the that's the very core of Greece for me. Of the idea of Greece. Of Greece in terms of physical Greece and its people. So that's Greece. Yeah. With your description right now, literally you made me uh, travel back in Greece. And right now I feel Greece inside of me more. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're um, and do you have a, um, a work of, a Greek work of art uh, that you have a strong connection to? Uh, you can talk about, um, uh, something, a, a poem, a sculpture, uh, or a song, a movie, whatever is. Ooh, I can I can bring one of each, but uh, since I talked about the idea of freedom, eleftheria, eleutheria in English, if we transpose the Greek word uh, which exists in English, eleutheria, going where I'm love, uh, uh, where I feel there is love, or where I'm loved. Um, so my yeah, my one of my favorite poems is the. Um, the um, which is now the part of it. Parts of it are the Greek anthem, but it's a hymn to um, Eleutheria, the hymn to liberty or to freedom, which is mm -hmm. um, by Dionysio Solomos. Um, all the the words. There's 158 uh, stanzas, of, uh, verses, if you want to call it that way. Um, all of them talk about freedom, and it's a, it's a piece of art. That poem, of course. There's my favorite poet Elitis, who talks about especially all the poems uh, related to the Aegean uh, and love. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, so, so many other things, you know, our, our ancient, ancient sculptures, uh, sculptures um, the, m the, the amazing sculptures of the Parthenon, the sculptures of Aphea in Aegina. I mean, we're, we're Greek. There's so much to pick, pick choose from. <laughs> yeah, we're so proud of being Greeks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, how would you describe um, summer in Greece, Greek summer? And probably summer in Greece is not like three months. It's from uh, regarding the temperatures from May to October. How would you? Um, summer in Greece is the very summer has another has four seasons. If you think about it, it starts. It starts mildly, uh, and then it becomes a cool summer in October. So from May to October, that's our summer. And it's so colorful and different and has so many different smells. And 
It's very dry in August, but you have the sound of the cicadas. Zizikia, uh, right? In Greek, you, it's 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 very friendly in June and September. It's very cool in October. You can still swim, so it gives you that extra little chance to, you know, to 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 feel it's still summer. So this is, I mean, I think the Greek summer is the renewal of hope, and um, yeah, that's what it is, physically. Re in reality, but also metaphorically. Um, a lot of people, I ask this question because a lot of people know uh, when they hear about Greece, they know the country about uh, it's as a summertime location, uh, as a, an uh, idyllic um, island uh, beauty, and we have many archaeological sites, uh, which indeed is the truth. I mean, we summertime is a great experience for someone to have and also we have um, uh, the range of our archaeological sites is vast uh, but apart from that as a, with your producer identity and uh, your uh, long uh, experience as an actor would you consider Greece uh, for a film with a different scenery uh, than the previous ones described uh, let's say for a mountainous scenery or uh, an action movie um, with a modern background, etc. Absolutely, absolutely, and I can I can say this from experience. I I actually um, acted as a, uh, so as an actor. I I participated in movies in Greece, um, two two Greek movies and one Turkish Greek Turkish movie, uh, which showed me another Greece. So um, continental Greece has incredible landscape. The areas, northern Greece, you have the landscape in Greece and the changing is incredible. So tourists know only, or someone, you know, your average um, um, American or even, f or even I don't know, any other person, hey, non-Greek. Yeah, they think of a Greek island with, you know, the white homes and the Blue mm -hmm. sea. And it is that too, but it's not only that. If you go to places like northern Greece, Karpenisi, um, or um, central Greece, you know, you have these um, lakes and, uh, and those mountains and those big rocks. And uh, uh, I mean, th it's endless. So, uh, ab and, and also the weather is very different. It's very cold in the north and snowy. So you have incredibly... Uh, winter settings if you need them and summer mm -hmm. settings or you know in between very green areas uh, like Carpenisi or the Peloponnese and so and access I guess I mean everything has an easy access it's not like uh, extremely uh, easy um, very very short commuting right you can go from one end to the other in a matter of a few hours and uh, of Greece and from one end to the other or by plane you can in a matter of uh, you know minutes under half an hour so it's an incredible country and with an incredible setting and for all types of setting not just this the blue sea and the white homes and uh, what do you think about uh, Greece's a uh, new um, uh, film production incentives uh, like uh, the National Center of uh, Audiovisual uh, Media and Communication uh, the network of uh, film offices and the 40% um, uh, cash rebate incentive combined with uh, the 30% tax relief. I just mentioned some. But. Yes, um, so I've looked into it quite a bit and I've uh, forwarded to many of my friends. Um, finally, finally, we have an institution or we have institutionalized film production in Greece. And so I'm very happy because in the 13 years that I've been here, it, it had been a struggle previously. And it's it's nice to see that finally there is a law. And since 2018, uh, I think there's already uh, over 100 productions that have applied for the program. And um, so basically, if you're a producer and you want to shoot in Greece, not only you can easily because you have you know, someone to talk to. Previously, you didn't know where, who to talk to. So you have an, an official body to talk to. And number two, you can 
you can put your rebate, the 40% rebate, which is an, ama- it's an amazing percentage. You can put it as a collateral. If you're an investor, you put it as a collateral uh, mm-hmm. w- if you want to get an extra loan from the bank. Uh, and not to mention the 30% uh, um, you know, tax incentive, tax basically a tax a return, which used to be, I think, it started with 25 and I think it's 30 mm-hmm. right now. So these are, these are c- extremely, um, um, how can I say, uh, uh, very um, nice figures for a producer and an investor. So I'm extremely proud that finally Greece uh, has that. And mm-hmm. yes, I believe when this is over, when COVID is over, even smaller producers will be uh, using this platform. Um, and it plus it's easy. You go online and you just apply and. Mm-hmm. Well, here for to help also uh, the office here to the public diplomacy office of the council. Yes, and uh, that's amazing too. Yeah, and also well, we try to give uh, to help some people that they already have uh, their uh, um, their senior their. Um, uh, scripts and they want to film right now even with COVID so we're trying to to help them out and make their, their oh, that's scene. amazing that's amazing you yeah. should yeah yeah I should make that known because a lot of people think you know the borders are closed but they are literally but for these uh, particular things we're trying to yeah you have to, to promote yes. yeah. so uh, my final question is going to be about LA and uh, if there is a, um, a network uh, in a uh, film industry and entertainment industry for Greeks, is there an, a network uh, like that here? And uh, if not, yeah. do you think that this could be useful? Absolutely. Um, it is a very strange um, idea and concept um, for, for, I have been th- here for 13 years, it's hard to help each other, to be honest, um, because, um, a- and I, I don't think this is, uh, this is just related to the Greeks, you know, it's, it's, it's related to any sort of Greek. I mean, there are some communities who are, who have better networks than others. Um, I mean, their networking works better uh, no. than others, um, and I can attest to that, but there are other communities uh, who also do not have this type of network. Um, so, you know, it's hard. It's hard because it's everyone's in their own bubble trying to get somewhere, get to somewhere. And, and so, you know, you have people around you who ask for help as well. And it's like, oh, how can I help you? I can't help myself, you know. But there is a point where if we have enough people in key positions, um, especially younger people, because the older people who have made it, they're too busy, (laughs) to be honest, Mm -hmm. they're very busy. And they usually have a question, you know, the the young ones. But if we're, if we have young people who recently made it, and we have enough, a number, a number enough to make that network happen, yes, we can make, create that network. But that, and that means, you know, there's enough of us who can really, um, work in solidarity and 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 get organized and push other people as well and we have to be in key places but you know individually all of us help have been helped and are helping but that's not that's that that doesn't create like a like a safety net for a bigger number of people wanting to come here so we Mm -hmm. need to create that definitely okay so that brings us to an end uh to our interview and I would like warmly to thank you again for uh, sharing all these tips and insights. Um, and thank being you. here. Your, your questions have been very, very, um, uh, very interesting for me also. And I'm, I'm quite shocked at some of my answers. I, I'm, nev- I'm never preparing anything, as you know. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.